please do not make me think about Ronald Radke in the middle of a good <laughs> album. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the New Music Podcast. And I do believe this is going to end up being the second one within a week. These might be going up at the same time just because of some technical errors last week, last time around. But uh, we got a very interesting week of albums to talk about here. Um, The Hot Topic stock price is dramatically rising. (laughs) Do you want to tell them what those albums are, Micah? We have Bring Me the Horizon with Post Human 2 Next Gen. I added the two. And then um, (laughs) not one, not two, not three, but 21 pilots and a guy named Clancy. Yeah, sure. That'll work. Vince back with his stapler in Dark Times. Yes, sir. Black Dresses, which is an interesting release. It wasn't supposed to release this week, actually. There's some drama. Yeah, I believe it got leaked. It's actually some drama that we'll have to read the last second and then regurgitate. All right. With Laughing Fish. Yes. And then uh, Hotel Pools dropped an album. I didn't know a hotel pool could make music, but they made nature. They sure did. Which makes sense, I guess. They are full of water. That does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? Alrighty. And I do want to mention quickly as well before we get into it, we were going to cover Bad Bad Not Good's next mid-spiral, I, I believe... Yeah, that's the... We were going to cover the next Mid-Spiral EP that they put out, and they're putting out another one next week, I believe, as well. But we've opted not to cover those, because they are compiling all three, and I think maybe another one, into an album pretty shortly here. So we're just going to go ahead and take a look at the album when it drops instead. Just kind of keep it all fresh. First album for the week. Bring Me the Horizon, Post Human, Next Gen. This took me back. Yeah, yeah, it took me back to freaking high school, dude. dude. Even in 2020, that's when Post Human 1 dropped, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Which was the year I graduated. Oh my god, that's right. I graduated in 2018, loser. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, actually, I think it was technically 2019, because I graduated early. It doesn't matter, regardless. Dude, when I was listening to this album, <laughs> Utopia popped out, and I'm just like, oh yeah. Yeah, man. This is walking, <laughs> walking the river walk. Really does bring you back if you're a fan of Bring Me the Horizon from years past. I can't say that I've really reviewed visited them much in recent times but they have been a band that stuck with me a little bit like every once in a while i get a little bit of a craving a little bit of an itch to go back to some of their stuff i think that the previous post-human project was one of their best releases ever do you think that's fair i think that's true yeah definitely that one had dear diary on it it had teardrops a lot of bangers on there the song with baby metal and uh it was kind of all over the place a little bit experimental for them but kind of going back to their heavier roots and i think a lot of the same can be said for this second part of the series that has now finally released after such a long wait. Yeah, they had uh, Aurora on this project. That's true, yeah. It's somewhat akin to the unexpected features that were on the previous one that way. If we want to talk about Amen, Lil Uzi Vert makes an appearance, which is, I suppose, just as unexpected as how Bring Me the Horizon appeared on their last album, on Lil Uzi Vert's last album. Both songs, pretty good collapse, but... Apparently it was Mid. What? People are, are pretty mid on that little, little Uzifer Vert album. Pink Tape, you mean? Just like the album as a whole? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think it, it had a lot of highlights and a lot of low moments as well. It's very long, so you had a lot of room to miss. And I think that they definitely did quite a few times, but the best songs on there are some of their best songs in general as well. And I do think that the one with Bring Me the Horizon, which was a little bit controversial in acceptance when it released, was one of the better songs on um, Pink Tape. And I think that maybe Amen is not quite the best song but one of the best songs on here and i don't think it really has a lot to do with lil uzi vert's 
um, inclusion because that verse is very short. I forgot. Little Uzra's on here. Yeah. I'm listening to it right now. Yeah. Um, and then you had the Glassjaw lead singer, I believe, on that track too. Kind of just... Daryl. Kind of just filling the same spot Ollie would have otherwise. So despite the fact that the features are a little underwhelming on that track, I still think it's one of the better ones though. Just there's so much energy on that. It hits so hard. And I think there's a lot of songs that uh, that hit really, really broken hard on this album. Utopia is one of my favorites. Yeah, big Deftones vibe on that song, I noticed. It seems like that's a yeah. big influence. And the song with Aurora is even more so that way. Yeah, that shit was my favorite. That's your favorite song? I like the Deftones. You like those songs? Mm, yeah. The Deftones influence goes over pretty well. I'm not someone who has been a fan of Deftones historically, and I have gotten ripped apart by comments for that exact reason. But I think a lot of their older stuff is pretty good, and I think the influence on Bring Me the Horizon and how these worlds are kind of meeting is really cool. I think maybe even I would say the influence is like a little heavy-handed to a point where it was a tiny bit distracting to me yeah yeah it's it's kind of like you know you guys aren't exactly doing your own thing but it still sounds super sick yeah and like the random concept in the background caught that a little bit the concept of the album you mean yeah 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 yeah. with like the robot voice stuff and everything that's going on with this like the lord the the lord This goes deeper than Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> no, we have so much. We have two albums this week that are emo kid lore albums. Like, what's hey. happening, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, why is it 2013? or 2013? Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> You're gonna have sad kids sitting around just, like, reading things this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I do I do like it. Um, I've never really gotten too terribly invested in that sort of thing. I don't know. I think these can very easily be separated from the concept, which is less so about the next album we're gonna talk about. But, you know, if you don't know there's any sort of concept going on here, I, I don't think you have to pay attention to the fact that it exists at all you know what i mean yeah what's your opinion on not available not available um the na track track nine. Oh, oh yeah you mean na yeah i think that usually means not applicable doesn't it i see it used in both either way yeah least favorite song on the album i do believe um i think it's a little corny personally yeah 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 it's like it felt very hollywood and dead to me like very like 2011 random <laughs> this track in the middle of a otherwise crunchy album yeah i can see where you're coming from with that comparison what it actually reminded me specifically of very much so is recent falling in reverse stuff or maybe just falling in reverse in general <laughs> um which is just not something i want to be reminded of at all <laughs> <laughs> Please do not make me think about Ronald Radke in the middle of a good <laughs> album. But it's not really like a bad song. Hello, Ollie. You knobhead is one of the. <laughs> That's kind of me. <laughs> that may- keeps it from being bad. The make love to a chainsaw <laughs> line in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just British mumbling, bro. That's all I hear. British mumbling. <laughs> it's, it's a little corny, but it's a little fun. And I feel like the self loathing on that song is the most like stark and noticeable, which in a way is kind of like, hey man, do we got to be doing and all that but also in another way it's like okay it feels kind of genuine you know i don't want to rip on him too hard for it it's just genuinely corny you know yeah yeah it's it's corny but it's in a genuine way my cat is trying to eat me bro she is biting my hands so hard <laughs> dude stop being delicious i think i had food not, on my hand and she's probably trying to eat it <laughs> or she's just being playful but if y'all hear some some shit in the background it's her trying to consume me anyhow <laughs> um, nom, nom. <laughs> um, nom, nom. <laughs> anyhow though yeah i was thinking this album really trails off in the back half originally yeah but all those songs are growing on me so i really don't know what to do with it anymore um following na you have lost and strangers both of those really give me a lincoln park vibe i agree with that but i don't like lincoln yeah but i'm the i'm the lincoln park fan of the two of us by far here i'm literally looking at the symbol tattooed on my arm right now but yeah uh i do like those ones for that reason i don't think they're the most 
original stuff in the world though either again some of the influence seems a little heavy-handed on this album and i think that's an example of that happening die for you what do you think of that song uh hold on i'm surprised it didn't stand out no it <laughs> just i'm just really high dude <laughs> i assume you're re-listening oh yeah no, that's mid mid yeah it's mid you think it's mid that's all it's mid. like you don't have a strong opinion on it i really don't it's like, sorry. I've had a recent arc with this song. It came out, I believe, four years ago. I think it was pretty closely following up the last Posthuman project, and it made it seem like we were going to get the second one pretty soon thereafter, uh, which obviously did not end up being the case at all. But this was the first single, and it made me really nervous for however this was going to turn out because I didn't enjoy the poppy direction of this one. Like, it really sounds like they're going for a pop song on this track. Yeah. Maybe more so than they ever have. Yeah, bro. I'm like, hey, what's in my ears, dude? Yeah. Another uh, artist that I don't want to be reminded of during this good album, that is that it feels like a chain smoker's hook. I mean... Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Hit my brain immediately. I don't know if it's necessarily the case or if I'm just getting my wires crossed. I just can't think of anything but the chain chain smokers. I don't think I've heard of chain smokers. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I don't know. That's what it reminded me of. Oh my god. I don't. I've never heard a chain smoker song. <laughs> <laughs> keep it that way i'm trying but you try you fucking compared to i hate you <laughs> why would you put this in my ears ne- never <laughs> i wanted to keep never hearing it just click off of it it's not worth it it's not worth it man <laughs> okay i'm gone all right i will say i was re-listening to this album last night late at night and i'm like wait why is it kind of hitting now <laughs> There's something still very corny about how polished up that hook is and everything, but I'm starting to really love the rest of the song, and it's getting to a point where I can actually excuse the corniness of that chorus. Were you not in the positive section at first? On that song? On this album. Oh, no, 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 no. I definitely was. I'm only speaking on Die For You when I'm saying that the the corniness and, well, N.A. as well. I, I think that those two songs are kind of the standouts but i was definitely on the positive end there's so many we haven't even mentioned here that are great as well uh kool-aid i think needs to be addressed because what a good song man yeah i think that one was pretty good yeah it was the first two are my favorite the first two like actual songs overall uh yeah yeah utopia and kool-aid that makes sense those are both great ones kool-aid is my favorite track it did drop as a single and i was absolutely blown away when it dropped as a single and i think the song is only continuing to grow on me hell yeah hell yeah man and then um yeah i mean going down the list here you got top 10 statues that cried blood insane title but but cool dark side's good bullet with my name on it's good you got so many solid tracks here it's just they're kind of doing the heavy stuff kind of doing some rock stuff it's all it's all just just solid and i think that the concept is executed okay yeah i was pretty just like yep this is a pretty pretty decent album yeah yeah what was your score i feel like we're at that point are yeah 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 i, I think so i think so i'm sitting yeah. with a 75 on this okay i thank god i'm at a 72 i was so scared you're gonna be like oh yeah 85 or like a 45 yeah you know i'm a little mixed on it but overall i'm i wouldn't say impressed but i'm satisfied <laughs> i'm like okay okay we got some we got some content out of them here like finally dude it's a little bit gratifying i'll say that much you know yeah yeah for sure well then we can move on to an album with almost entire crossover audience like almost 100 percent. same people <laughs> same people 21 pilots clancy yes, you could throw me- I'm more into Bring Me the Horizon than I ever was Twin One Pilots. Yeah. I want to say that I was probably more of a Bring Me the Horizon yeah. fan, but I was very into both during especially my early high school years. Yeah, I, that's when I was listening to early high school. I think I was just like spamming System of a Down and <laughs> MGMT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, System of a Down as well for me, but it was all kind of alongside here. You know, the, the hot topic core <laughs> as I was kind of 
a saying. They're popping bottles at the Hot Topic headquarters right now with these two albums right next to each other. <laughs> Dude, it's a conspiracy. They paid them to drop it. <laughs> yeah, they paid them to drop at the same time. <laughs> I bet those shirts are already out. Oh, dude. Or been already out. Probably once singles dropped, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. But either way, dude, I'd love to see this little resurgence. It's it's cute. It's fun. I'm okay on seeing it. <laughs> You're okay with it? I'm kind of mid on this album. You're kind of mid on this one? That makes <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You're not a tiny human and you're the wrong kind of guy. So you can't be a 21 Pilots fan. It just doesn't work. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like the Alex G ethereal kind of like hotel books kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah and see this is exactly this is exactly where i was at in my headspace during like <laughs> the worst time in my life the, when i was just kind of the worst as well so coming back to 21 pilots is always like a little bit painful for me because it just does bring back certain feelings that it, like i'm like i don't necessarily want to be here right now but that being said there's a lot of nostalgia as well have you heard a full 21 Pilots album before? Yeah, you showed me the one with the guys. On. With the guys on it. Vessel? Uh, the one with the guy. Yeah, Vessel. Okay. The self-titled Blurry Face and Scaled and Icy. Okay, so you've missed the good album then. <laughs> Trench was the good album? Dude, I... Trench was the good album, yeah. This is also a sequel to Trench. Which I suppose was probably pretty obvious with the voice saying welcome back to Trench on Overcompensate, but either way. Bro. Bro. Oh, I haven't heard regional at best. Oh, yeah, keep it that way. That shit's garbage. Uh, anyways. Not even on streaming. Yeah. Um, but is this that, is... Is it because it's bad? What? Hmm? Is it because it's so bad? Because it's an unfinished version of Vessel. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. There's some songs that are unique to it. But kind of a different era of their progression entirely. I think as a sequel to Trench, this serves pretty decently. It is going back into some sounds that are a little bit more unique. They're experimenting and messing around with things a little bit more on this album, which I think is fine, but I don't think it went over quite as well as it did on Trench. I'm thinking about the highlights of that album, and I don't think they match up to the highlights of this album. Yeah, I haven't heard Trench. Okay. Yeah. I missed that connection. Going in blind to this album in particular is kind of like uh, the worst context you could have for it, I guess. Yeah, I was like, what's happening? <laughs> where, where am I? Okay, okay, yeah. There is a lot of storyline stuff going on, a ton of world building on this project. It is telling a specific story. I do like, though, in a way that you don't don't necessarily have to take it on the surface level as this is all storytelling and you can kind of relate it to like actual human emotions and the way a song would typically make you feel i think a good example of that is routines in the night where you have him talking about like kind of this uh mental state and like thoughts he wants to ignore with the spray painted stay out on the doors or however it's phrased on there um you can kind of take it both ways and it is it is very sad emo boy vibes again but like still it kind of works you know and then vignette following that you can take it in more literal senses that relate to the storyline but you can also relate it to like addiction or depression and things like that i think it's kind of cool yeah yeah no i i went through going theory thing and i was just like man i'm not i don't really get all this you don't really Sorry. get all this yeah yeah it's like, fine and then i was like i listened to it high and i'm like oh dude <laughs> i'm gonna have so many funny things to say but then i took too much and i'm just like uh <laughs> fucking, i'm so fried i love that you have a, a back and forth between sober and and high for each of these album experiences <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro this album high i was bored <laughs> so bored you were bored <laughs> oh i feel like it'd be more fun no is it not really the dudes i was just kind of like, like all right <laughs> all right okay uh, there was a couple more times where i'm like grooving then i was missing the words so it just like evened out okay okay got you i don't know if paying attention to the words would have really garnered you any benefit just because of the fact that you aren't really up on the storyline and stuff but yeah. either way like just in and how it sounded what, what do you think overall just kind of mid on it yeah i was just like yep, okay. this is 21 pilots in my ears yeah 
sure, sure, sure. I think it's a lot better than some of the stuff they've done. It's a hell of a lot better than Scale than I see, or at least more interesting. Yeah, I'll give you that. I like Scale than I see less. Okay, yeah. I keep having weird arc moments with this album, and especially what songs I like or dislike. I know that people are liking Lavish the least, and at first I was like, the fuck, man, Lavish is pretty good. Uh, but then I came back to it recently, and I'm like, you know, actually there is something a little bit grating about this. Uh, I keep keep having little moments like that. Lavish is kind of a standout track. You like it? Uh no oh oh okay stand out is bad yeah that's kind of rush is kind of like i mean you had momentum going it would have been fine mm. kind of feels like this track falls flat yeah yeah it really does that one doesn't go a lot of places and i feel like there's a distinct switch after track six into a worse section of this album and yeah. i think the craving is awful i hate this song what about Jenna's version? Well, yeah, it's the it, corny ass title. Um, you're doing the Taylor's version thing. Oh, ha ha. Okay, cool. And then it just sounds like an Ed Sheeran song mixed with a slow Post Malone song. But unfortunately, <laughs> turn it off, bro. Fuck. I was listening to it while you are talking about it, and I'm just like, shut up. Not you, the track. Oh, yeah, no, dude. I I can't stand that one. Honestly, I just really hate it. I think that Tyler Joseph is also just less suited for that type of singing as well. So this, like, folksy pop song thing is even more intolerable than it would be when it's just generic, because it's, it's actually slightly frustrating to listen to, given how his voice sounds on this track it's just not a good one careful seeing that around dork they gave it a 100 uh yeah i mean if you want <laughs> if you want to i don't i don't want to but like if this is what you're looking for i don't know honestly though i feel like the craving just makes it not a 100 oh sorry here's a chicken em- fried chicken emergency fried chicken emergency <laughs> I think that the first half of this album has really grown on me to a point where I kind of love it, though. Overcompensate sounds like a fucking movie. I do love that song. I do hate the accent he's doing on the chorus, though. That stands out to me as like, ew. Yeah. Yeah. But next semester, is that your favorite track? That's what I would predict is your favorite track. Let me check. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but yeah. I think Overcompensate was, I like that one too. Okay, yeah. But at first, we're fine. Next semester kind of sounds like a Vampire Weekend song in a way that I appreciate a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's got a nice sentiment. It's cool. The most recent development for me is Loving Backslide. Um, Something about how that chorus hits, I feel it in my soul, man. It's just fucking great. I really love that song now, and that's not something that I would have said at all after first listen. So if there's a 21 Pilots song that I'm most likely to revisit at this point in my life, it is Backslide. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. Honestly, I felt like that one was one of your favorites. Just the vibe of it all. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of what you'd cling on to nostalgically. Yeah, it really just, it hits for me, and certain moments on this album really hit for me. I don't know how much I care for or about all of the story stuff. It's just something that was kind of always in the background for me, so the fact that that's the main focus of this album is something I'm iffy on, but hey, dude, it's cool. Do your concept. It's fun yeah yeah totally we ready for scores or you you have anything to say at all my score was a 55 55 okay well uh i'm i'm sitting at a 71 oof okay i think that's fair you know yeah yeah i don't know man i'm not sure if it's done growing on me i'm not sure if it'll get better or worse for me on repeated listens i'm not sure how many repeated listens i want to give it either but i'll be coming back to the good songs on here the best ones anyways i mean yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I I don't know if I expected you to like Twenty One Pilots any better than that, but I'll take a fifty five. At least you're positive on it. <laughs> no, that's not positive. That's medium. Well, sure. I mean, anything over a fifty is technically positive. Well, I guess yeah. 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 Um, dude, <laughs> did you see what Brad Taste and Music give gave it? Yeah, and um, it pissed people off to the point where he said he now will not be reviewing anything else by Twenty One Pilots. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, dude, the stands are uh, 
the stands are ripping him apart. And it's very unfortunate that we are living in that level of fandom where somebody can't just have an opinion on some fucking music without getting shitted on from every angle and having people just being horrific to them in their community. Like, that's not okay at all. No. No, 21 Pilots fans are just just on one in a way that is not all right but i mean yeah i guess that's kind of what you run into with something that has such a cult fan base that is so dedicated that also just has some like young and unstable individuals yeah bro yeah but 21 pilots forever for sure man for sure it's not my thing (laughs) i can't wait for anthony fantano to drop a two out of ten on this and then get assassinated (laughs) I mean, like, I hope he doesn't. That, that sounded bad. That sounded like I want him to be assassinated. I do not. Wow. There can only be one melon. <laughs> oh, no. I'd, I'd have to carry the torch, bro. We need one bald music reviewer. <laughs> not the best teeth in the game, though. No. Worst teeth in the game, bro. You, no one can have it. <laughs> yeah. For sure, dude. For sure. All right. We all get to move on to Vince Staples' dark time, then? Vince with the stapler. No, I'm losing it. Hope you're not for the ride. Buckle the seatbelt. So many women to crash and die. Who can I call? Vince with the stapler. Well, this is pretty fantastic. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's one of those where it's just like, oh look, Vince Staples dropped. Evie. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. Like he's such a consistent artist. You know what he's gonna drop is gonna be good. Even Ramona Park broke my heart, which people were pretty underwhelmed with his last album. I mean, um, mm. I I even like that one quite a bit. I come back to I believe the title is East Point Prayer quite a lot. Love that one. Are you with that? Is my fucking one of my favorite tracks on and that's on uh the self-titled it looks like uh the first two people dropped an 80 on but the other three it's in the 70s like 73 73 71 mm. as far as the self-titled what do you mean like self-titled and fm are both 73 mm. okay yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i've heard fm i think this is his best since the self-titled but i don't really know if it passes it up i listened to the self-titled album a lot though like i really gave that one some time to grow on me because it's just so far from what I was expecting and I feel like this is kind of a trilogy of albums everything that he's done in the 2020s so far it really feels connected yeah yeah no I can definitely understand it I, this is definitely like the self-titled era it's definitely not from the summertime 06 or big fish theory yeah looking at big fish theory to now is such a weird contrast it's like you had him dropping these big bangers and like it wasn't so introspective and then he did shrooms once <laughs> yeah it could be something like that man he he had a shift he had a shift it's the earl sweatshirt effect the earl sweatshirt effect yeah it kind of is a progression akin to his first album versus i don't like shit i don't go outside i think there's actually a lot of parallels you could probably draw between that album and this new one from him dark times feels like it's next to each other in a way are you talking about i don't like shit i don't go outside next to dark times yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's parallels you can draw, you know? Yeah. 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 I was more making the connection from Earl going from I don't like shit, I don't go outside to some rap songs. Oh, that's totally fair. Yeah, now that you say that, this is kind of that way. It's more abstract, lo-fi stuff that uh, is, is poetic and sad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Talking about a lot of, like, childhood experiences and, like, trauma and just super sad. Like, this is such a sad album, you know? So good yeah yeah it it hits it hits good every track i think i slapped an 80 on i don't i had no little points for me black and blue was my favorite so black and blue is your favorite yeah i'm seeing that a lot oh really yeah i, I think people are saying that generally Which, i don't really yeah, get well, it though it's because it's a banger dude it sounds super nice like i really love how the drums and like the turntable scratches come in on that track like the production on it is strong i just don't know how much that one sticks with me 
I didn't understand that. It just fucking rips, dude, for me. It's like, fuck yeah, dude. If I'm going to listen to one in specific, it's going to be either Etouffee, I, th- I think is how you pronounce that. Etouffee? I don't know. Or Little Homies. I think that those ones are the easiest to come back to independently, and they have the biggest, you could kind of look at this as a pop song type appeal. It, it has a mass appeal effect to it with how the chorus sounds and everything. You know what I mean? That track was really good, too. Uh, if you do if if you do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Track six. <laughs> yeah. I really should have looked up how it was pronounced. I meant to. Same. Yeah. Little homies, also, they're all good. I think they're all good. I don't think there's any bad songs on here. Radio feels the messiest to me, but I, it's not a bad song. Yeah. It kind of sounds like he's like maxing out the mic there for like a half of a second. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's that, and then there's the samples all over that. And I feel like they're incorporated in the worst way compared to the rest of the album, but it's still cool. I feel like there's kind of a story at the core of this one, too, if you were to look at it very closely. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, Justin is a story in and of itself. Like, that that whole song is just a story. Wake up story. (laughs) Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. His storytelling bag where he's bringing up specific instances in his past and stuff, I think, is a nice bag for him to, to get in. I think it's usually cool. Yeah. Yeah. What was your score? You think we're ready to just get there already? You don't have anything else to say? Yeah. All right. No, it's just, it's like, it's real good. Yeah. I think, (laughs) I think that's fair. It's real good. Writing's real good. Sounds real good. Like, the production on this is just amazing. Makes real good besides radio is a little weird, but... Yeah, there's some weird moments, but... (laughs) Vince Staples' worst is, like, still better than a lot of shit we hear. That's true. That's true. I would absolutely agree. And I do, I hold Vince Staples in a little high regard for that kind of stuff. I've just always noticed that just everything sounds good. He is a very quality, consistent artist. Absolutely. Yeah. He doesn't really ever drop stuff that's like iffy or bad, really. It's just, you know what you're getting in a way, and it's always going to be good. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Um, Would you end up scoring it? 84. Nice. I'm at an 83. So, Yeah. I, again, though, I don't know if this one's done growing on me. Same. Yeah. I'll have a little bit of an arc with this one, I think. I think I'm going to turn it on while I'm doing other things or just maybe come back to it and give it, like, more in-depth listens. It'll probably age like the self-title did for me, and I'll, I'll yeah. let it live on. Yeah. That shit fucking marinated. Yeah, it's, it's one that's got to sit with you for a while, for sure. And I think that's cool. I like that there's a lot of substance more than there is style, which there's still a lot of of you know yeah yeah for sure Alrighty. well now we can move on to laughing fish by black dresses This is an unfinished album, from what I could gather. Oh, really? Yeah. Unfinished how? Let's go based purely off of this one guy's review. In and out. Um, <laughs> it's enough, like, looking back there and looking everything up. It said this album wasn't meant to be released yet. Uh, there's some shenanigans going on with the duo and how somebody, like, impersonated one of them. Yeah, I saw there was there was some sort of shit going on that way. And then misgendered the other one. Um, yeah, dude. So then uh, this album was dropped too fast by like the label or no not the label the original label by the person who yeah i know that it came out before it was supposed to accidentally but i do believe the album is finished like i think it was supposed to come out in this state as far as i can tell okay yeah also this is apparently the last black dress this album i saw that as well everything is sad this week because you have the first two albums this week that are like emo boy sad and then you have Vince Staples being like serious sad and now this one's like it's like mental breakdown music so it's sad in a way but also it's sad that it's their last album supposedly yeah yeah man it's the depression week but as a send-off pretty solid I think it's really long (laughs) so long there is so much music included here like there's 
what uh, 76 minutes or something like that and 22 songs yeah you got right i remember i mathed it out earlier and it ended up being a case of there being 22 songs and each of them being a little over three and a half minutes like on average i mean uh which is yeah. crazy because yeah you don't really have interludes you don't have very many quick songs like there's some that are two minutes or something but pretty much everything's a very full song and you have so many of them here yeah i think it's all pretty solid i wasn't like as hot on this as i was with like Vince staples but i was definitely like oh yeah black dress has dropped again oh for sure yeah and did you ever like really become a fan of them i know you were kind of trying to at one point no it didn't stick it didn't stick okay it just wasn't there for me it was a little more a little more edgy a little more pretentious okay okay fair <laughs> well i think this is about as edgy and pretentious as it could possibly get so uh how are you feeling on it pretty good i like it less than vin staples but more than everything else this week so far okay okay that's totally fair i think that it's a very hard album to approach because of the length of it and because of the varied sounds being as wildly different from track to track as they are. Yeah, it did harsh my vibe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to the stone. Yeah, no, I can't imagine that would be a good time. This seems like the type of music that if you put it on while somebody's, like, tripping, they would just get traumatized. Yeah, but they're on swans when someone's tripping. Uh, that's a different story entirely. Just kill them. Yeah, that, that could go a few different ways. <laughs> But this, I feel like it's so hectic and it's so inconsistent and it's just unpredictable that if you were at all trying to relax, this would just entirely throw your whole day off, you know? I mean... Your centripetal equilibrium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Have you given this more than one run through? Do you know how you're feeling? I've given it one and a half one through. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. It was hard. Uh, yeah, definitely. How do you feel about, like, the flow of this? Pretty good. Pretty good? Okay, yeah. I fucks with it. It's going on the playlist of uh, trying to stay calm in traffic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, it reminds me of, like, the N64 Spider-Man sewer level. That is so specific, but I love it. I found it. You found it? Found it. Very specific. Honestly, I feel like I could just make a bunch of noises into the microphone, and it would be a better review than what I could actually have to say about this album. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I could just sit here and scream and, like, make gargling sounds for a while. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right. There you go. That's that's our thoughts on it. No, really though, there's so many interesting ideas here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe a good way to approach this is like what what favorites you got here? Can we uh, pick out individual tracks in the album that we're reviewing? Yeah. You sick fuck. <laughs> Cat cup makes me feel like I'm in a uh trance that I can't get out of. Yeah, the first leg of this album here, like these first four songs are so menacing man they fucking eat you bro they go yeah come out and get eaten <laughs> right it really makes it feel like the listen is going to be even more disturbing and unsettling than it already ends up being with those first four songs but yeah cat cup is probably the best of them i think yeah and then they continue with the whole industrial thing but you get wounded animal which is a lot more peaceful and uh I think it's good that they committed to a peaceful song a few times on here. Wounded animal? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it gets in this, like, still very weird and uncanny space, but it's, like, calming. It's a little break in the industrial techno hell that is the first half of the album. Yeah, and towards the end it just gets more weird, and they're experimenting more and more, it feels like. It's like falling into a bottomless pit, but... Uh, it's a, like regular pit stuff. It's a steampunk convention. <laughs> what? That, that's uh, that's one way to put it. It makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense, man. I won't even <laughs> question it. There's literally chainsaw sounds. Um, I mean, this is as chaotic as it can possibly get. Like, dude, just skimming it. Better be a Hudskavarna. <laughs> 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 oh man like skimming this album is such a trip dude because you, you just never know exactly what you're gonna gonna hear next and even some of the songs like especially towards the end i'm trying to remember which ones exactly i felt this with they're lost in the sauce but a couple tracks um deep 
I was like, man, this is like two robots fucking. <laughs> two robots fucking. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I guess you could kind of say that about industrial music in general, though. I mean, it's uh, it's industrial music doing industrial <laughs> music things. It's uh, yep, it's that weird German guy in the corner. He's, uh, yeah, small glasses. <laughs> for sure dude um no days off i think is my favorite song on here it's a metalcore song mixed with uh the industrial stuff that they already had going on here bro my screen is so bright crazy track yeah dude it sounds like a fucking godzilla metallica laser death gun it's a lot of words pal <laughs> i think it all closes on a good note too silence is a really good like closer it works very well yo yeah yeah dude it sounds like demonic Super Mario Bros. Yeah, it sounds like the end of like the demonic Super Mario Bros. level, like the end credits music. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, the like, I think the pacing of the album is very good. I don't know if you asked me that question. Yeah, I, I did, and I think that it's pretty okay too. It's going to get derailed with this many chaotic sounds and this many tracks and everything, but I think they pace things out decent. Yeah, it's like a train derailing, but managing to fall onto another set of tracks. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> that would make that would make a lot of sense. Part Part of me is kind of wondering if this is just like a hard drive dump that they decided to kind of pace out a little bit good because if they're gonna retire black dresses as a project then maybe they just kind of wanted to get it all out there yeah that makes sense it would kind of make sense but i think that it came together as a pretty good album anyways yeah any other thoughts on this one robots robots for sure, dude. Uh, I ended up going with an 84% on this. How about you? Oh, I went with a 78. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think that's totally fair, too, though. I just ended up liking every song so much that I had to be pretty high up on it, but I still think that it's a ways off from perfect, just because it's kind of a mess in a good way, I guess, if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed Peaceful as Hell more, so I had to make sure that my scores were higher. Oh, me too. Me too. I think so, <laughs> anyways. Let me let me see if mine is. I don't know. Yeah, I was feeling a 90 on that one, so I definitely enjoyed Peaceful as Hell more. And then I enjoy this more than Forget Your Own Face, which was the other more recent one. Oh, yeah. But either way, you know, good way to close things off. Hell yeah, Black Dresses. Forever. If this actually ends up being their last project, that is tragic, but you know, dude. It's been it's been good, been a good ride. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a bumpy bumpy ride because of all the uh, industrial noises in my eardrums. For sure, for sure. I'm gonna grab some water and put some throat medicine in my throat because it hurts so much right now. Pussy. Yeah, I know. Just be the throat goo. I'm gonna go. All right, all right. Okay, and then hotel books, nature, hotel book, pools. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find it. Hotel books is very different. That's why I couldn't find it for so long. I kept looking up hotel books. Mmm. Yeah. Definitely a different guy. There's no fucking books at this hotel. There's no fucking books. <laughs> hotel pools. Uh, nature. Yes. What genre is this? Vaporwave, technically? Sort of, kind of? Vaporwave is such a broad, wide-encompassing genre that it's so hard to pin down exactly what Vaporwave is. Some eats me, bro. Yeah! Okay, I'm glad it clicked with you, because it clicked with me a lot, too. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Very simple, but really works well. Yeah, dude, like, it's a classic little, like, like dudes, I I was listening to it when you, right before you fucking talked to me. I think it was, like... Mm-hmm. You were saying that. It was at the end of Along the Creek. Great specific song there, too. I do love yeah. that one. Yeah. You hop back in the chat yeah. at, the, like, the last 10 seconds when it's completely quiet, and it scared the shit out of me, <laughs> and, then, and then give me more time and started playing, and it derailed my entire listening experience. Oh, man. <laughs> scared me so bad it's a really good one to just sit with it on yeah i i totally that would throw me <laughs> off too man 
<laughs> I was able to just relax with this one so much, and it's like, I'm relaxed. I don't know how immersed I should be, or like, if I want to cry, or feel happy, or just float away, dude. Float away, dude. Like, dude, it's so nice. It's just so peaceful. Like, I, if you want to call this ambient, it's like some of the best ambient music. It's just doing its ambient thing that I've heard. Ambient vaporwave. Yeah, and I mean, those two things are very close to each other in how it actually sounds so again it's kind of hard to classify this but yeah yeah i don't really know if there's a ton to say about it but like it's just this blissful little no dude just fucking kidnaps you yeah it just kidnaps you just runs away with your entire vibe and makes you makes you sit in a place for a little while (laughs) this is a stony baloney 100 yeah yeah that's fair i especially if you're having a bad time while in any in inebriated state this would be so nice yeah dude that's why my score is a 100 (laughs) is it actually no okay i was gonna say it's a little bit simple to call it incredible i guess because i do end up just kind of like gaslighting myself the whole way through i'm like wait wait hold on a second is it as good as it actually is because there's so little going on that i have a hard time being like whoa this is incredible you know what i mean but it does it right that's why i gave it an 82 you gave it an 82 huh i I gave it a 79. Kill yourself. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. It's wow. it's just so nice. It's so nice. And I do believe I was reading on the Bandcamp page. This is also a tribute album to his brother, I think, which is super sweet. And I love that a lot. And it really sounds like something that should sound that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally, man. I can see it not being everybody's thing, but it's very simple, it's very nice, it's very peaceful, and it's awesome. Forever. For forever and ever. Totally, dude. Alrighty, um, well, my voice is about to fucking give out. You want to run through the scoreboard for this episode? Sick. Boom. (laughs) All right. I am sick, so uh, it's it's pain right now. It's all pain. Oof. In a in a nasty last place by a landslide, we have 21 pilots. Clancy, 63%. And then uh, back over to the green side of things, uh, Bring Me the Horizons are number four for this week at a 73.5%. We got Hotel Pools, Nature, 80%. I, was, I forgot the funny thing I was going to say. <laughs> and then uh, Black Dresses with a Crying Fish, 81% at uh, our number two spot for this week. And then number one is Vince Staples, The Dark Times. With an 83.5, very close top three this week. Super close, yeah. All within like a, a couple percent of each other. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Um, Within 2%. I think I forgot to say which number it was like four times. I think I said one of them wrong. I think you forgot the point five on Hotel Pools. No, like like where like where they were in the top five? No, you said it right. Oh, okay. I probably forgot the point five too. Anyways. Anyways, yeah. Anyways. That anyway. is totally fine. Well, I suppose that's all that then. Uh, pretty good week. Pretty good week you didn't like 21 pilots i think it was pretty all right but i suppose that's all just to be expected at this point as per usual yeah before i die over here do you have anything to say to the people micah uh a bus just a bus (laughs) yep well that's that's uh that's pretty wholesome and we'll see you next time